Okay, so um, now I'm in uh, Substance Painter, and I want to show you how to get your your shoe um, textured. This is the earring that we did earlier, or that I did earlier. Um, so let's make a new project. We have to find our um, Mary Jane. And so we're going to want this Mary Jane flat to text texture. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you need to make sure you're in OpenGL. I forgot to do that. Uh, I often forget to do that. If you're bouncing back and forth between different um, game engines, um, it can get a little bit confusing. But as I understand it, last I heard, um, Sansar was using OpenGL. Okay, so we have that. We're gonna go ahead and open this. Okay, so now you'll see you have the um, Mary Jane. As you can see inside, there is nothing because you don't need an inside because that's where the foot's gonna go. Um, and so here's our shoe. Okay, and um, so the first thing you have to do is that you have to go and you have to bake all of your maps so that you can actually um, texture this uh, appropriately. So you bake your mes mesh maps, um, and so you bake all of these. You notice you start getting these little shadows and things. It shouldn't take too long. Okie dokie, pretty fast, right? And um, so now we'll start, we'll start um, texturing our shoe. Now, one of the things you can do with this when you have a low poly shoe, you can see how there's just not a whole lot going on in there, is there? Um, there is like, it's all smooth back here. And you know, normally a shoe would not be that way. It would have, you know, a seam back here. Um, the edges of the um, leather would be kind of like, raised, right? Because that's just how that works. You would have the stitching. You would have stitching here. And and you can do all this in substance. You can. I prefer not to. I prefer to do that, um, these things in Photoshop. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. I'm going to go ahead and put some textures on that. And then I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to make these um, height maps. I'm going to show you how to put those in. Um, but just so we could, I want you to go ahead and see how flat it is when we start putting the leather on there and why I do this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, since the most of it's going to be black leather, let's just let's just drop drop that on here. So we go to layers. We're going to want to fill layer, right? Because it's going to be most of it. Um, you know, even though it says artificial le leather, um, the the one that comes shipped with um, substance, the artificial leather is is plenty um, adequate for what we're doing. You can see it's, it's perfectly fine. So there's our leather. See how easy this is? Um, then we're gonna make another layer. We're gonna make it another fill layer. We're going to want to, now we're gonna have to put, you know, brass, this is probably brass, not gold, right? So we're gonna put our brass on here. And you're gonna think, okay, she's lost her mind now. She's got a whole shoe covered in brass, but that's, that's not my, uh, my um, end goal. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to these layers. We only want the brass to go on the brass parts, right? Not on the whole freaking shoe. So we're going to add a black mask. Oh, wait a minute. Now it's all gone. Okay, how are we going to fix that? Alrighty. We are going to go to this map. wonderful thing that came out. When did it come out? Maybe it came out a year or two ago. Um, Polygon fill. It is like amazing. Absolutely love it. Um, and I tend to do this. This this just makes it where you can paint by polygons. You can do it on the model. You can do it polygon by polygon. And what I like to do is UV chunk fill. So we're going to do that. So we're going to go in here. And what you're going to notice, we're going to go in here and we're going to fill in all of the metal parts with the brass. Right? And so now we have a brass buckle. We have leather on the shoe. Now, why do I want to do it this way? You know, I used to um, set everything to different materials, and that was all fine and dandy, except for what you had to do is you had to go through later and then merge all of these little textures. It was kind of a, a pain in the patootie. So I started doing it this way, <clears throat> and it works way, way better. I just really like it. Okay. Um, alrighty. 
that's that. I tell you, the other thing is, you could leave this like this, but because the way this works, and I have leather underneath this, um, it's going to have the normal from the leather coming up through. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a black mask on this layer too. Because that way it won't send up the um, leather through the metal. See how it cleared it off? So I think I'm going to go ahead and put a black mask there too. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do all of this here. And so now we have the shoe and the metal. As you can see, the metal does not have, oops, does not have um, the leather texture on it, which we don't want. Okay, so now I have this black shoe, right? But there's like no variation whatsoever on the sole. And I don't really like that because that is absolutely no reality I'm aware of in the in, on this planet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this layer, right? Let's see, copy layers. And then I'm going to paste layers, right? I've got the same layer again. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to clear this mask. Um, clear mask. And then when I do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going, oopsie daisy. I'm gonna change this color. I want it to be slightly different. So the sole slightly different from the shoe. And then I'm going to add a, wait a minute, I'm gonna go in here and add my um, parts that I want that color. As you can see, I still need to tweak it a little bit. Still not exactly what I want. I think that's all of it. There we go. Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I have all of this on here. The color's still not quite right, is it? A little bit too gray? Not gray, I mean, not dark enough. So. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this a little bit darker but I want it to be slightly different okay do you know what I kind of want this to look like a stacked leather heel and right now it just kind of looks like absolutely nothing interesting or possibly a I don't think I like this either okay so I know of no shoes on this planet that are all just one thing, like that. They're, they're just, that's not a thing. So we need another layer to do our heel. So we're going to do another fill layer. What do we want to put on that? You could probably use just some nice rubber type thing. Let's see. No rubber. Okay, plastic. Maybe a matte plastic. Um. And then we'll make that, maybe we'll make it a dark, 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 dark tan. Yeah, that works. Okay, but that's the whole shoe. We don't want that. So we're going to add another black mask. And we're going to want to fill that, the parts that we want. That. Make sure we got it all. Let's go ahead and change this color back so I can tell. Sometimes, sometimes it's a good idea to kind of have a crazy color to you make sure that you got all the parts you want to have that color. And so we don't, as you can see. So we've got to add a little bit more in here. All right, so now we have all the, all the parts we want. So now, now we'll take it to the color we actually want. I really don't like that really not very interesting tan, but I want kind of a brown-ish black. 
and then the top. So the only thing that's a problem with this possibly is that it may be slightly too shiny and it has that um, leather on it. And I don't want either of those things. So we're going to cut up the roughness a little bit, right? And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to this um, previously this previous layer we did and because I have too much on that mask we're going to go ahead and clear that mask again so we're going to clear that mask so that that um, so that the leather will not come through on the sole just for the same reason because I want it to be smoother there so we've got to go back and we've got to um, to fill that back in where we want the leather all right, so now we have the leather where we want it, and we have the smoother texture where we want it, and we have our brass where we want it, right? But here's the thing. This shoe looks so, so flat. Like, no shoe that would ever exist. And this is still a little bit shiny, isn't it? The bottom's still, I don't know, though. Sometimes you do see shoes that shiny, don't you? Okay, but what I'm getting at is that this shoe is way too flat. Um, when you have a low poly model, one of the things you run into is that like the edges just don't look freaking real. So you're like, okay, how do I change that? Like even around here, there would be some crinkling, there would be some interesting different things. And so the way you, you fix that, or I fix that as a height map. Now listen, you can paint all that in, in, in substance, you can. Um, I just prefer to do it in Photoshop so I'm going to show you how I do height maps in Photoshop. Um, and so we're going to pause this here. We're going to save this file and we're going to pause it. And then I'm, I'm going to show you how to do a, a height map in Photoshop. Okay, I wanted to show a little bit about how I get a little bit more definition in my models. When you go really low poly like this, it can make, kind of, it, can make it kind of difficult to get any real um, definition. So, um, so what I do is I make a height map. And I do that by going in Photoshop and taking my UV and then like, like for instance along the edge of the shoe I'll make it a little bit raised by putting a little white line here and then um, well I'll just show you the process. So basically what we do is anywhere we're wanting on this model to have a little bit of a raised area basically along the, the, um, the edge of the strap and along the um, edge of the top I want those to be raised, uh, raised ever so slightly because that's what leather does in real life, right? So I want to do that. Okay, so I want to make it where um, it's a little bit raised at the edge. So um, I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a path to draw a line on. So I get my path tool and this is in Photoshop, like I said. I, li I like to use a combination of Photoshop and Substance because I think they both have their, their uh, good points. Okay, and so this is where my bevel is. So this is like at the very, 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 very edge. And so what I want to do is I want to put a little line here. So let me go ahead and put a path here. Mm, yeah, that should be close enough. Okay, so then after we get the path all done, then what we do is we have to draw a basically a white line on here. So we wanna make sure we have the white one selected. We wanna make sure we have a good brush for this. Um, let's see, what does that look? Yeah, it's too big. So we want to get something a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll just go with like two pixels maybe. And let's make sure so let's see, image, image, image size is only 1024. Let's, let's put this up to 2048 because otherwise when I go to do my stitches, they're just going to be too teeny tiny and it's just, it's not going to be fabulous. Okay, so now we have this done. I am so sorry, man. It is like ragweed season here, guys. And like I have the worst allergies ever. And so basically I am a, sn a sniffle princess. Is that a thing? I, that's not totally not a thing. I, I don't even think I should have said that. 
Okay, so sorry, I'm sniffly. It got the little bit of the allergies going on. Okie dokie. So what we're gonna do now is we want to draw this path. So I have my, um, my brush set to two. I need to make sure I'm on a new layer. I wanna make sure my, my image is like 2048 by 2048 at least so that my stitches later will show up. So I'm gonna make a new layer. And then, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my paths and I'm going to just do a um, minute, okay. Make sure, go ahead and do a stroke path. Okay, so then I have this little line, right? So <clears throat> what this will do, okay, so now I have this little line and what this will do is I will go in on the layers, right? And I will go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, okay? And what I will do is I will just fade it ever so, so slightly. So what will happen is when we fade it out like this, what it's gonna do is it's going to tell the computer that, hey guys, this is like higher than that. And it's gonna make a nice little, I guess you could call it like a lip on that leather. So that's the first piece of data I want. I want a little bit of an edge on my leather. The next bit of information that I want and the next path I want to make is for my stitches. So I'm going to do that next. I'm also going to want to put that on a new layer too. We'll call that one stitches. So when you do this one, you want to come just on the inside of where this up part goes. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two things here, one or three things here. We're going to put a valley. We're also going to put a, um, we're going to put stitches and we're also going to put the shadows for the stitches. And we're going to export them in different ways so that we can layer these into substance also. Okay, so now I have that path. So now, now that we have that path, three things are gonna go on that path. One is going to be the stitches. Another one is going to be the, um, the shadows and one is gonna be the valley. So let's go ahead and we'll do the stitches first. I need to find a good height for that. Um, let's make sure we name, uh, name these. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Okay, so um, we got that named. So what we need to look for is a good um, stitches. I got these, um, I got these stitches from um, Graphic River. It's a tools license and truly wonderful, realistic embroidery brushes. You can get them there. Um, so anyway, so I have seam one here. Actually, I like the curved seam the most. It's the one that I think looks the most real, let me find that, here we go, um, bended, here we go, this one. Okay, I usually put it this on seven, it tends to work good, um, usually. Let's see what kind of, um, yeah, I think, I think that'll be good. Um, maybe be able to go to eight. Yeah. So part of it is is figuring out what uh, what works for this. Yeah, I think that one will work. Okay, so we're gonna go with ten. We're just gonna go with ten. Okay, so now we are on the stitches layer. We're gonna go to paths, and we're gonna do yet again a stroke path, and we're gonna use the brush. And there is our stitches. Now the next thing we have to do is we need to make a new layer. So we go to um, layer, new layer. You can also do the other shortcut, which I never can remember. And this will be the shadows that go under the stitches. And so we have to find um, this same shadows and we have to change this value to 10 again. 
We want to make this a dark color. We're going to go to the paths. Oopsie daisy. There we go. And we're going to go stroke path again. And this will be the shadows. The final thing we want to do is we're, we're going to want a valley. So we're going to do new layer. And we're going to make that a valley. That will just go back and we'll use um, a regular brush. We'll put that back to maybe two again. And then we'll go to paths and we'll do another stroke path. Okay. Okay, so now I have all the information I need and now I'm going to set this up. Okay, so now that we have all of this data, we have all of our stitching in our valley and our edge, we're going to take that out. To substance. This is my, my height map. Okay, and so like I said, we have, okay. okay, so now we're back into Substance Painter and I need to put the height map in here. So we're gonna make a new fill layer. We're gonna put it on the bottom. We're gonna come here, we're gonna turn off everything but height. We are going to import our height map. And sometimes this can take, this is I think my fourth one, a couple of times. Um, you just keep tweaking the colors and things so you get the right height map. But I didn't want to bore you with that process. But don't think you're, you know, if, if you don't get your height map to where you like it on the first attempt, that's perfectly fine. Like if, if you did, well, I don't know if I like you anymore because I've never had my first height map ever go well. It, it's always like a process for me anyway. Okay, so here we have the height map. And now, so now what you can see is how that has made it more rounded at the edge and it has the uh, textures of the um, stitches. Um, they may be, I can't tell if they're too deep or just a little bit in, inverted. Let's see, so when you get it like that, you can go here and we're gonna take this to height and what you can do is you can turn this down and what I can't decide is if I have this this data is just too intense or if my stitches are inverted I think it's just too intense okay so I've turned that back a little bit but you can see how it makes it not as flat looking okay so there's that part um, the next thing I want to do is I want to put this line on the back of my shoe. So I'm going to do another, like a paint layer, right? And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to only paint height. I don't care about anything else. Okay, so I want to set this brush um, to only be in height. And I'm going to take this color down to the left because I want it to make it an indentation. Now the way to make this kind of straight you can paint it directly on here, or you can do it on the model. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm going to put it, the brush, man, this is gonna be tricky on here, here, right? And then I'm going to do a, ah, oh, boogers. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, and then I'm going, maybe we'll start down here. We want it to be kind of, yep, that's it. Okay, we want it to be straight. I'm gonna start up here. Okay, so that's our back edge. It's a bit heavy, right? So what we wanna do also, we wanna erase it off of that. You see it's into the heel. So you want to erase that off. Let me get that really small. Let me get that off the heel. Okay. And then it's it's a bit intense, right? So we want to make it um, 
not so heavy. So we're going to take this down a little bit. Okay, and then that way it will give you that little bit of an, an edge. It's a little bit um, contrived looking, I think we would say maybe, or maybe it's a little bit just abrupt. So let's see if we can like smear it just ever so slightly and maybe not make a mess. I'm just like making it look a little bit, ah, oh, booger snots. I think we're gonna have to make this a little bit less opaque. And so that's a little bit less intense. And that way it kind of looks like on the back of a shoe, you know, how the leather will go together. So this, this is getting pretty good. The thing is, it still doesn't look real. So one of the things you can do to help with that, one is that we need to tell these stitches to not be so freaking um, shiny. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go back to our Photoshop document and we're gonna pull out those stitches, right? And we are going to use those. And we need to make it where you can actually see them. Okay, so white is more, if I remember right in Sansar, it's going to make it less shiny. We're about to find out, right? So let's try this. Let's make these first, let's make them more opaque. Stitch roughness. Oh goodness. Okay, so so now we're going to expand. We're going to uh, export this to get the roughness. And so basically I'm just doing a PNG of this because I want to tell it to be not so shiny in those spots because fabric is not shiny. Oh goodness. Import, we, so we want to come here, we want to import the resources. I'm going to import the stitch roughness, texture, shelf actually, yeah I think it'll be okay. All right. So we're gonna come up here and we're going to do another fill layer. And we're only gonna do roughness. And um, we're going to get this here and that should make it more rough on the stitches. And the, the shoe will be less weird looking. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. This should be right now. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is, I don't know of any leather that doesn't have some like fading on the edges unless they're brand new. So I'm going to do that next. So I'm going to make another layer and I'm going, I'm going to make this one, yeah, it's another painting layer. I'm gonna have this to just be color, okay? And I'm gonna get, there's, there's a lot of really good brushes here. I want one that's kind of unusual that will give me kind of like the way wear does. Um, one that I like is, where did he go? There's artistic saw powder. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But there was one that, eh, that's not it either. It was like a crystal one, maybe? Okay, we're gonna try dirt. Yeah, we're, um, we're just gonna make it kind of small. Okay, and I like to paint 
on the UV because it doesn't get lost so much there when we're doing this sort of thing. And another layer and then we're going to paint on this one. If we want to make sure that it's to base color, we want to make sure that it's to normal. Okay. And so now we're going to paint, in theory, we're going to paint on here. And we're not getting anything. Oh, because I've got smudge. What a goofball. So make sure you actually have the brush, you know? That's kind of helpful. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, I don't, I may actually like this. What is that? Oh, no, not what I want at all. And again, I'm, I'm painting height, and that's not what I want. So let's, we don't want height. We want color. That's what we want. Not at all. Okay. Let's see if we can find... dirt. Hmm, we are still... Oh, there we go. Couldn't figure out why that wasn't working. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go a little bit bigger and we're gonna have the flows a little bit less and the opacities a little bit less. Okay, so basically, we're not gonna worry about this so much. We're just gonna get it on here because when you see what I do, you're gonna, first you're gonna think, oh my gosh, she's lost her mind. But I just wanted to have a little bit of wear like the way leather would have right at the edge. Let's make sure we're on, ah, dang it. We're not on the right one. Okay, so we wanna make sure that here it says UV. And we're gonna paint it along the edge like this. And you're gonna think she's lost her mind. It's like so white, but um, just give me a minute. Okay, so now we have all that white on there. And another thing I like to do is to put a couple of scratches on things because it's like the shoes get scratches. Let's see, here's some scratches. And um, maybe a couple on the toe here. Well, it's not quite what I want either. I want them kind of bigger than that. So I like that, maybe like that. No, it's too big. Um, and then we'll put maybe, you know, I was always getting things on the back of my heel. Let's put a couple back here. And then let's put some on the bottom. Okay, now you're gonna think I've lost my mind, right? But, but I haven't because this is not what I'm doing. I'm gonna do this as a soft white. So this is just, this is just a, a little bit of a nuance. This is not anything heavy. You know, it's just to give it see, just a little bit more of something. Um, there. Barely anything. But sometimes it's those itty, itty, bitty changes that actually make a thing look more real than otherwise. Okay. So this is still too shiny. Where is that thing at? Is that this? Nope. This one? This one. Okay. This is too shiny. So let's get the roughness on that fixed. Okay. So I'm going to go this direction. Okay. And that'll be more like a rubber heel. Okay. So that that's my texture process. Now listen, this is absolutely nothing insanely amazing this is just super simple super quick um done um and you know i could spend i could spend a very long time on this um putting every single little uh 
crinkle and all kinds of little damage, all, all kinds of stuff on that. But this is just a super simple black Mary Jane and, and how I textured it. Okay, that's it. Um, the ne Oh, the next thing we need to do is that we need to export it. So we're gonna have to export these textures and then we set it up for OpenGL. And you know what I do? And it seems to do just fine. I just do PBR Metal Rough. And it seems to do okay. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then we just export. And if we're lucky, then we have textures and they work. And here you go. And here's our OpenGL uh, normal map. You can see where we put the edges on there. Alrighty, so um, we'll be bringing these into Sansar, and uh, that's the end of this.